for uh, univariate distributions, we have studied lots of examples, lots of different distributions. Uh, however, for multivariate, it is difficult to um, write down different distributions. The main reason being that the, the form, the form of either the density function or the CDF, to write those down, you have to write a function of several variables. So, it is not very obvious how to do that. So, one thing that helps us is if you can separate, if one can separate the marginals, this is copulas. So, if one can, uh, so this is a multivariate PDF or PMF. This is a multivariate CDF. So, we want a wide class of wider class, wider in the sense beyond normal class of multivariate distributions. Okay. For the same reason we studied so many examples of univariate distribution that given a problem it is not obvious that it will be a normal distribution. There are lots of uh, different kinds of scenarios and you might want to need, uh, you might want to use different distributions. We studied like the T distribution, the F distribution, chi square and, and so on. So, we want something similar to those. And what we will use for doing that is the tool of copulas and what that does it is it separates the marginal and the joint behavior. So, what does that mean that uh, there is an F which is a function of say k variables. So, what we will do is we will look at each of the marginals f of x 1, f x 1 the first component x 2. So, in general what that means is that f x i is you integrate with respect to all the other variables j not equal to i of the density joint density d x 1 to d x k, but you do not have the i th thing. Okay. So, uh, you integrate over all the other things and then you get the marginals. So, let us get all those marginals and let us see what is left over after you take out the marginals. So, essentially uh, we want to see how the joint behaves if you take out the marginal behaviors. And that function is called the copula. So, it, uh, if you want to do this in mathematical terms, then copula is a function So, this function C is called the copula of this function F. And this C, and so it is probably not clear why they complicate matters like this. Uh, so, what happens is these x's x i take value in r, right, anywhere on the real line. So, you have a n dim k dimensional uh, r, r k, everything is taking place in r k. Now, where does f 1 x 1 take value? If we have done this as an exercise that if you have a random variable x that follows a distribution f. And if you look at f of x, then that follows a uniform distribution. Remember? Uniform 0, 1. Remember that result? So, so what that means is that these are just in the 0, 1 to the power k. So, it is in a small space. Now, the problems of like thicker tails and stuff, they vanish once you concentrate only on the 0 1. So, there is no tail really, everything is concentrated on 0 1. So, those things you take care of through the marginal 
and then only what is left in the joint behavior you take care through the copula. Okay. So, uh, individually each random variable each of these directions may have problems like may they may be thick tails, some of them may be asymmetric, uh, some of them may be um, only positive valued and so on. So, what you do is you do not look at them separately you take care of all those things through the f individual f's individual marginals. And then what C captures is afterwards how do they jointly behave if you have uniform 0 1 random variables. So, now all of them marginally are uniform 0 1, but even then what is their joint behavior that will be captured by the C. Okay, so, that is the function C. So, C captures the joint behavior maybe I have written down of k uniform 0 1. So, marginally there are uniform 0 1 random variables. Okay. So, I should give you some examples and then one theorem. So, this is the So, this is the uh, idea behind a copula. Now, we will make this more concrete. So, firstly the definition what is a copula? So, a d dimensional copula in this case I use the k dimension a d dimensional copula is a function C from 0 1 to the power d to 0 1 because ultimately I want to get back a, a CDF. So, the values it will take will be in 0 1 with the following properties right. So, I have written down uh, something like this, but does a function like this even exist can you actually write f as this is not clear. So, if, if you can what properties will it have and so on. So, C u 1 to u d is increasing function of each u i. So, dimension of uh, e f and dimension of c are different. Dimension they both take value in 0 1. So, they are both scalar valued they are the same there are k of them there are k of them. Oh, now I change the k to d, uh, you can keep this as k. So, everything you can keep as k. So, now I have not even talked about any f yet, I am just saying that what kind of functions will be called copulas, but we want to construct them in such a way that we get this back. So, we have to keep that in mind. So, firstly, if it has to be a uh, CDF, if it has to match a CDF, then CDF has this property that for each each component you have an increasing function, right? at least non decreasing. So, is maybe non decreasing. And secondly, if you see if you take all the components to be 1 and this, then what do we really want? then we want f when when each of these f 1 of x 1 is 1. In particular this will happen if x 1 is infinity right plus infinity. 
So, if we evaluate f at all of these are infinity and then one of them is such that it is uh, f inverse say f i inverse of u i and the others are also infinity. So, f of such a thing. So, this means that this is the marginal distribution of the ith component. Everything else can be any value. The ith component is less than f inverse u i. So, this should be same as the probability of this should be u i. Okay. So, this is same as the probability that x i is less than f i inverse of u i. So, this is f i of f i inverse u i which is u i. So, this should hold and thirdly we must have the, the rectangular thing. So, which the rectangular rule that you take the probability of a rectangle that should be non-negative we had that for CDFs um, maybe I should write that down. So, C of difficult. So, you have u 1 to u k and v 1 to v k and each v i is say bigger than u i. So, this is u 1 v 1 u 1 v 2 u 2 v 1 u u is the u is smaller than v but no this is this is v 1 sorry u 1 v 1 u 1 u 2 sorry u 1 u 2 so u 1 u 2 is this point v 1 v 2 is this point okay now we can write down what these are this is u 1 v 2 and this is v 1 u 2 okay so, this area should be uh, non-negative. So, if you take the CDF up to here, you subtract the CDF up to here, subtract this and add this. Remember that, that kind of inequality? That should hold. So, uh, minus 1 to the power i 1 plus, so this is a concrete uh, way of writing this C at W J 1 to W J D and then you sum up K K uh, I K is 1 and 2 and all these sums I 1 is 1 and 2 where the W is U J and W J 2 is V J ok for all J from 1 to T. So, this is just uh, writing this concept for D dimensions uh, mathematically that you take the copula function at all the V's and then you take make one of them U and then you make two of them U and so on and accordingly there will be a minus 1 to the power however many you are making U's. So, so, the, this is the way of writing that thing. But what I have, have in mind is the rectangular inequality should be satisfied. And again that you see that because you want to match it to a, a CDF. The i's are all one, and one or two, either one or two. So, one would mean that it is the u, two would mean it is the v. Yeah, representation of that thing with u's and v's uh, in a multi dimensional case. Yeah, so, but it is not necessary that you remember such things that as long as you understand that it means that, that the rectangular in rule holds that the probability of any rectangle is is I did not say this is non negative. Okay, so these are the usual suspects for properties of u, 
and any function which has these properties will be called a copula function. The difference of this from the definition of a CDF is that here we had this to be some the probability of u x being uh, this was the probability f i of uh, <coughs> x i okay, f x i at, at x i so this was uh, this is not anymore so this is the new thing that the so actually if you want to define a CDF in a general way you would have only these two properties with the range being r k to 0 1. Hmm? So, now you have the range being 0 1 to the power k and you have this extra thing which plugs down the marginals to uniform 0 1. So, what that means is that a uh, copula function is uh, in particular a uh, um, multivariate C D F on 0 1 to the power k with uniform 0 1 marginals. Now, what is interesting is called Sklar's theorem, which says that what we wanted actually is true that if f is a multivariate CDF is any multivariate CDF with marginals f1, f2, etc. up to fk, then there exists a copula C So, then there exists a function with all these properties which satisfies f of x1 through xk is c of f1 x1 through fk xk. Conversely, C is a copula, if you have a copula on the unit uh, square or C is a copula and F1, F2 up to Fk are univariate CDFs, then this f defines a multivariate CDF. Then f above, so f say we call this star defines is a multivariate CDF with marginals f1 through fk. So, the question is given a distribution f how shall we find what the copula is? So, we have a CDF f. Now, we want what is the cop corresponding copula function. <coughs> so, the copula function should be same as f of x 1 through x k where u 1 is we will just match these things here. This u1 is f1 of the x1. Hmm? So, if we want to write the copula in terms of the u's, what we will do is we replace the x's by the f inverses. So, we will write instead of x1 through xn, 
we will write this as f so the marginal of x1 take the inverse function of that at u1 the marginal of x2 inverse function at u2 and so on okay so if we know an f we can write down what the copula is Okay, so far I think that is all we need about the definitions of copulas. Uh, and uh, one interesting thing is, so this I will call theorem two, is that if you have an increasing function, so let's say uh, you have x, a random variable, with some marginals and copula is C x. Now, we define a new random variable y. So, this is a multivariate random variable is a k variate. Now, y i is some T i of x i. So, each component wise we are defining a function and we call y as this vector y 1 through y k. Okay. The theorem is that the copula of y is same as the copula of x. So, if you do something to the uh, marginally, this is you are operating marginally for each x you are doing some operation, it is not for the whole thing. So, if you operate marginally that does not affect the joint behavior and this is not uh, very hard to show. Sorry, T at, uh, sorry, T is uh, T also needs to be increasing function. So it where T i are strictly increasing. Okay, so um, maybe this is one thing that you can try your hand at. So maybe I will leave this as exercise. There will not be many exercises today. So, <laughs> so this can be one. So do this at least for the case where uh, they are say um, continuous, jointly continuous exercise for f a jointly continuous. So the density exists, joint density exists. Try to keep that key. Because then you know how to find the joint. If you have the joint density of the x's, you know how to find the joint density of the y's through the Jacobian formula. Hmm? So then you can directly find what the copula for the y's are going to be from this formula. And then you tally whether that agrees with that of the x or not. So now we will do some examples of copulas which will arm us with lots of multivariate distributions which you can, you can use as alternative to the normal distribution. That was the main point that how do we come up with lots of different uh, joint distributions. So we will do this through different uh, classes. One is the simplest copula. So what is the simplest joint distribution you can think of when you have some marginals? So you have say uh, this vector x1 through xk and we know the let us just for simplicity instead of calling this fx1 we will just call them f1, f2 is that okay? f of x1 we call f1 to save writing. So these are the marginal distributions. What is the simplest joint distribution we can think of? So let us say just 2. So we want the probability of x1 less than equal to a or say x and y, y less than equal to b. We know what probability x less than equal to a is, y, what probability x less than equal to b is for all a and b. 
what is the simplest way you could put them together? Don't care if it's true or not, but some some example that you can think of. Right, put them as in independent, right? In that case, what happens? The F, the joint, is just the product. And let's see what happens to the copula in that case. The copula for F, so, right, so the copula at U1 through UK is just going to be the product of the UIs. Because the copula is F of F inverse and, and this F function is the product of these things. So this is called the product copula. And what else? What else do we want to know about these? This uh, is when the they are independent. This is for independent random variables. Now here is a result. that any copula would lie between two uh, bounds, one is called W and the other is called M, K, I started writing K and the book has D so sometimes I am confusing myself, okay, where M is the minimum of u1 through uk and w is the maximum of summation ui minus d plus 1 and 0 for any copula c. So this is called the fresche hoefding bounds. These are called the fresche somewhere there is hoefding bounds. In particular, this will be true also for the product copula. So let us uh, try to do. Oh, again I'm writing D. K. And uh, so this is W and this is M. So any copula lies between this function and this function. 